All right, it's Wednesday. The Dow Jones Industrial Average hitting a fresh record high. We're on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to break it all down. Jim, let's start with reports of Gary Cohn being considered for Fed chief. I, I think that that actually is a market mover because I think that Gary Cohn is regarded by everybody on Wall Street. And I really mean it. I've never heard a bad word said about Gary other than when he bashed you in the head if you didn't make your numbers. Mm. But it would be interesting to have a non-theoretical person at the Fed because one of the problems that the Fed has, they've got uh, the trillions of bonds. And that is something that an academic may not know how to get rid of, but a practitioner would. So at this particular moment, it would behoove the Fed to have someone who actually understands the integral nature of the financial market so they can sell those bonds without hurting the market. All right, meanwhile, Bank of America out with a note talking about a delayed iPhone 8. Yeah, I mean, look, I think that uh, there was someone was saying that they're panicking and Cooper, you know, they don't panic. Up. They're the coolest people in the room. Uh, Apple's a consumer product company, and they're not going to release a product if it isn't perfect, even if they miss the Christmas season. It's not their style. So those who are basing their numbers on whether it can get out or not are missing the big picture, which is that this is a consumer products company that will not release a product before its time. All right. Also, your dog Everest Nvidia had a good morning. Yeah, yeah. Everest <laughs> is just you know, look. Everest has been perky. Everest got knocked down by uh, by uh, left by Andrew left and, and Citron. But you know what? Everest just recharged, got right back on the bed, took a little nap, and now Everest is a crouching tiger. Although he is a dog, uh, and that's why he is Nvidia. He's bouncing right back, and I think that those who trifle with him have been bitten. <laughs> he has bitten, we always have to put him in his crate when anyone comes to the door because he's a ferocious defender of Lisa and will bite anyone. And that is the definition of NVIDIA. And what about Bug? <laughs> Bug Chevron and, you know, 40 to 50 trading range, kind of not really show him much, frankly, hoping for a good inventory number, yeah. realizes that <laughs> the world is not under his control, unlike NVIDIA, and he really is just kind of sad. Oh, he's well, sad that he's an oil stock. Maybe he'll get there one day. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, someone posted a really good ver picture of their dog that looks a lot like NVIDIA, but it turns out that it's Broadcom. <laughs> owned by Action Alerts. Owned by Action Alerts. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. All right, Jim, let's also talk about your Mad Dash, or your stop trading segment, Western Digital. Wow, you know, Western Digital, I mean, a lot of people don't understand the court system. They filed to get a couple of temporary, in, uh, temporary injunctions uh, against... Uh, Toshiba in order to be able to get some records from Toshiba and also actually to block the deal. They want the temporary restraining order to get the records. That is a that is a huge victory for Western Digital. And it says basically to Toshiba, all right, we can't really negotiate with any bills because they'll have, if they get a TRO against Western Digital, against uh, Toshiba selling it to anybody else, it's finished. Because there are lawyers involved in these deals and no one wants to deal, deal with a situation where they could be subject to a TRO from a San Francisco district court since that's where all the bidders are located. Also, Twitter has a new CFO. Yeah, I'm surprised the stock's up this much because, you know, look, the guy worked at Goldman, he worked it into it. I'm sure he's a fine man, but uh, you buy Twitter because of the numbers, and I'm not seeing that. I mean, maybe by comparison to what's going on at Snap, mm. but I, um, you know, I think Twitter's having an okay quarter. I still believe that uh, Jack Dorsey did a great job, by the way, at Square. I'd like him to spend more time there, but Sarah Fryer doing the day to day at Square. Uh, Square, someone should buy Square, $9 billion. It's a fabulous asset. Um, PayPal, I don't want Schulman's doing so much he doesn't need to. He's opening a credit division himself. But uh, I do think that Twitter should be going up on something else, or it may be going up on something else other than the CFO. You talked about PayPal on Mad Dash. Yeah, look, PayPal, Dan Schulman is remarkable. Uh, people wrote him off repeatedly against Visa, MasterCard, against Wells, against uh, Google, uh, against JP Morgan, uh, and of course against Apple. Now Apple is letting PayPal into the into the uh, ecosystem, and that, that's a huge win. Uh, PayPal could go up substantially from here, even though it has already had a very big move. You mentioned Snap earlier. Barclays says it's a buy post lockup period. Well, look, I think that the prescription for Barclays that Barclays should have laid out, that I will lay out for the people who run Snap, is first you have to issue, you have to round up all the people who are in the 711 million shares that are coming off and get their commitment to not sell. Then you have to release the short form videos that you're working on and give us the slate of advertisers to show that the return on investment is actually uh, coveted 
by some of these advertisers. They have to do that. Will they do it? They don't have to do anything because they have this, they own the stock. They don't have, you don't have any voting rights if you own the stock, but that's what they should do. And I'm giving them that game plan just because like I feel bad for them. And like you said the other day on Squawk on the Street, Evan Spiegel should come on air. Yeah, Evan should just come on air and say exactly what I said. He shouldn't say anything else other than what I just said, though. Mm -hmm. So that's the script, Evan. There you go. All right, let's also talk about earnings to watch. We've got Delta Airlines on tap. You know, we had a really good uh, pras a TRASM number, uh, which is a, a, a very important number from American Air. Uh, and I think that that's uh, a great arbinger. You know, Southwest had a great number. That's an actual alert's name. Fabulous number, but some guy at some firm downgraded it because the stock had gotten ahead of himself, so to speak. I mean, really, Southwest is by far the best, and you're always going to get a premium multiple for that. I suggest you buy Southwest Air, not buying American. I like American, but I like Southwest more. All right, we also have the big banks' earnings on Friday. Yeah, we also have Delta, too, by the way. Uh, Delta's going to report in the interim, and I think Delta's going to be affected by good good numbers, not as good as American perhaps. Um, the banks are going to be difficult, and I'll tell you why, because the Ye the Yellen testimony, uh, which also has the market going, because she's basically saying, we're going to put some rate hikes in, but not no real hurry, it's not going to hurt the market. Uh, we're going to sell the bonds. I hope Gary Cohen's selling the bonds. But, you know, the, you need to see rates uh, really back to where they were earlier in the spring to get these banks to have the number, number bumps that we want. See, one of the things that's happened is the banks report, nobody bumps the numbers, no one says anything other than that was a good quarter. Now we know that if you're in a tech stock, you, you get the raised forecast, you get things going. Um, JP Morgan went very much to raise the forecast on higher rates and on the Fed raising uh, the short rates, uh, and you need both those to really get the stock to go to 100, which is my price target. Uh, I remain committed to owning City. We did trim some Wells Fargo yesterday uh, um, because we just felt that it was just out of whack. I like Key better than all of them. Key is the one that has done to be able to give you the bump, earnings bump because Key bought First Niagara. And Key was one of the, you know, most banks can't buy any other, most of the large banks can't buy any others because the concentration is so heavy. But uh, uh, Beth Mooney bought uh, First Niagara and, the, and it, it, it's been a very, very good uh, acquisition. All right, Jim, you just mentioned a bunch of action alerts plus names. You have a call for club members in just about an hour. Yeah, yeah. and the club members are going to hear, uh, they've asked repeatedly for, if you didn't have any stocks, which of which were the ones, the stocks you would buy? Meaning that we are very um, committed to not violating our basis and get rich carefully. I've got a 20-page explanation about why we don't like to violate our basis and how wrong it's been to do. But a lot of people have just joined the club, and we've got to uh, react to them and say, listen, if I just joined the club, here's what I would buy. So we're going to trace out that. I'm going to give you my uh, overview of where I think the economy is and uh, and why I like the market. And then we'll answer um, a, a slew of questions that we got from our forum that I think will be best for everybody who's involved in the club to hear. All right, go to actionalertsplus.com for more. Jim Kramer, thank, thank you. you so much.